Have you ever wondered how top Instagrammers make their photos look so good? Well, today I'm going to show you five tricks that you can use that will completely change the way you edit your Instagram photos. And be sure to stay till the end because I'm sure this last trick is gonna blow you away. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do with this photo is make sure that its color space matches the color space that Instagram uses. If you edit your photo and upload it to Instagram, but its color space doesn't match what Instagram uses, then Instagram is going to change the colors in your photo. We definitely don't want that to happen. So for this photo, we're going to come up to the top of the screen to document, and then we're going to convert format and then we want to make sure that it matches what Instagram uses, which is sRGB. And this can be found if you scroll all the way to the bottom. Another thing we want to make sure we do is change the color format so that it's RGB8, which is also what Instagram uses. Then with our... <laughs> it changed back when I did that. We'll go back to sRGB <laughs> and now we can press convert. Now that we're in the right color space, the next thing we're going to do is make Affinity Photo look like Instagram. When you're scrolling through Instagram, you'll notice that it's a white background that your photo is up against. And in Affinity Photo, at least how I have it set, we have a dark background which makes colors in photos look really good. But if we change it to white, it's going to change how our colors look. And we want it to match how Instagram looks while we're working on it, so let's change this background to white. To do that, we'll come to the top of the screen and click on Affinity Photo, and then we'll click on Preferences. With our Preferences open, go ahead and click on User Interface, and then bring up the background gray level until it looks white. Then we can close out of this. And the next thing we want to do is shrink down our photo so that it's about the size that you would see on a phone screen. For trick number three, we're going to change the colors in our photo. Ezra and I love to watch Marquez Brownlee on YouTube. He makes such good videos. And he recently made a video, I think it was last year, where he did a side-by-side -side photo test and had people vote on which photo they thought looked better. So he showed people these two photos. In the first photo, the photo is darker, its colors are less saturated, and the tone of the photo is more blue-toned. In the second photo, we have a much brighter photo with more saturated colors and a warmer tone to it. So you can pause the video for a moment and decide, but which one do you think looks better? Well, for this test, 228,000 people voted for the second photo, the warmer, more saturated and bright photo. And this was out of 291,000 votes which means about 78% of people in this test loved the brighter, more colorful photo. And you can probably see this as you scroll through Instagram. The brighter, more colorful photos probably have more likes. So as we edit the colors in this photo, we're going to follow those three principles. Bright, saturated, and warm. The first thing we're going to do is add a brightness and contrast adjustment. So let's click on our adjustments and then press Brightness and Contrast. So we know we want our photo to be brighter, and you can play with the slider to see what you think looks best, but I'm going to bring my slider up to about 30. And I also want to increase the contrast, so let's bring that up as well to about 15. All right, we got the brightness down. Now it's time to add a little bit of saturation to our colors. So let's go down to our adjustments and press on Vibrance. With the Vibrance adjustment, you can affect the vibrance and the saturation in your photos. And we've talked about it before, but saturation makes a much larger difference to the colors in your photo. So I'm first going to adjust saturation and I'm going to bring it up to about, let's have it at about 35. And now I'm going to adjust the vibrance as well. And this can vary depending on the photo you're working with, but for this photo, this is what I'm choosing to do. 
So the colors are looking a lot better already. And now we want to add a little bit more of a warm tone to it. So let's go down to the adjustments and press on lens filter. By default, the lens filter color is already set to orange, which is what we want. So we'll leave it at orange, but maybe we'll decrease the density, the optical density, just a bit so that it's not quite as intense. All right, our colors are looking great. We can select them all to see a before and after. So here was our photo before, and you can see it's not looking very good. It's a little dull, but with our adjustments, the colors are popping, it looks great. With our colors looking great, we're now going to add a little bit of sharpness to make our image look more crisp. So go down to your filters, and we're gonna press on high pass. The high pass filter is a little strange, but just know that as you raise the radius, you're going to see more details in your photo. And the details you can see are the details that will have sharpness added to them. So I'm gonna bring mine to about three pixels. And then with the high pass filter selected, change your blend mode to overlay. And if you check that on and off, you can see that it just added a little bit of sharpness to our photo, not too intense, but it'll make it a little more crisp. Trick number four is how we can make our photo as big as possible without Instagram shrinking it. So first, we're going to merge all of our layers that we have together so that we can work with it a little bit easier. So I'm going to right click and then press Merge Visible. So we're going to use this layer, but first we need to make a new document that's the correct pixel size that Instagram will accept. So let's press Command or Control N for a new document. And then we're gonna change our width and our height to match what Instagram likes. So the width should be 1080 and the height should be 1350. Press OK. And here we have our perfect size for Instagram. So we'll go back to our tab, press Command or Control C to copy this pixel layer, go back to our new document and press Command or Control V to paste it. Now I'm just going to press V for the Move tool and resize our picture so that we can see it within these bounds. So our picture obviously isn't quite the right dimensions for it, so you can be creative how you want to adjust it here, but I'm going to do kind of an artsy half face thing. <laughs> and that looks good to me. So with our picture's colors and everything looking just perfect for Instagram, it's time to export this image. Now that you've exported your image as a JPEG, it's time to upload it to Instagram. And this is a hidden trick that not many people know, but you can actually upload your photo to Instagram using your computer. And this saves just so much time. You don't have to send it to your phone and then have to upload it. You can just send it right on Instagram on your computer. So to do that, we're going to come up to our settings and then go down to more tools and press developer tools. With this panel open, the only button you need to worry about is right at the top. This will toggle your web browser so that it thinks that you're using a phone. So when you press on that, it now looks like we're using a phone. And I'm gonna press uh, the refresh button so that it knows that we're on a phone. <laughs> and now you can go ahead and press the add button and upload your photo. While Instagram gives us some great tools and filters to use, you have a lot more control and flexibility when you edit your photos inside of Affinity Photo. If you want to create your own custom filter effects, you can check out this video on how to create the Nashville filter. It's a really quick and easy tutorial and makes your photos look great. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.